As we have already realized in the previous chapter on improvisation in non-European musics, the departure point of Western art music presents us with various challenges in regard with our subject. We shall see that the challenge goes beyond the bare decoding of terminology. With its rich diversity of developments and styles, Western art music is the result and in many ways a reflection of the complex and extremely dynamic history of the European continent and its philosophical, political, social and economic developments and the conflicts that have arisen from them. In our search for traces of the element of improvisation, we would be well advised to take the previously mentioned ethnomusicological perspective and to critically question dogmatic positions and potential prejudices that are still prevalent today and have in part become entrenched in academic truth. Thus, we will briefly sketch where and when in European music history the practice of improvisation was cultivated, looking in more detail at developments in the 20th century. At the same time, we want to try to understand how and why improvisation repeatedly threatened to be repressed and forgotten. Fortunately, the latter did not happen and we are currently experiencing a new revival of interest in improvisation. Our task remains to better understand improvisation as an artistic method and to free it from old ballast and obvious under but also overestimations. In fact, improvisation played a not insignificant role in European art music, especially in its earlier history. Derek Bailey summarizes this in his book Improvisation, Its Nature and Practice in Music as follows. The working out and early practice of Gregorian chant and of polyphony was in both cases largely through improvisation. The 17th century school of organ music was mainly developed through performers' extemporizations and throughout the 17th and 18th centuries accompaniment both in opera and in concerted chamber music was generally left to be improvised over a figured bass which itself grew out of improvised counterpoint. At the beginning of the Baroque period, improvised ornamentation extended equally to secular and sacred forms, to the arias of opera and oratorio, to cantatas and sacred concertos, to songs and solo vocal pieces of all sorts, and it appeared also in the newly rising forms of instrumental music, especially sonatas and concertos. Even much later than the Baroque period, Paganini could write, My duties require me to play in two concerts each week, and I always improvise with piano accompaniment. I write this accompaniment in advance and work out my team in the course of improvisation. In organ music, this tradition of the importance and appreciation of improvisation has continued to the present day especially in the French organ school. A decisive element that has contributed to the decline of improvisational practice is perhaps to be found in the emergence and growth of orchestral music. On one hand, Improvising in large orchestral ensembles seems difficult and impractical for various reasons. And on the other hand, the orchestra itself manifests a strict division of tasks and a strict hierarchy. The composer as the ingenious creator, the conductor as his extended arm, and the orchestral musicians as the performing craftsmen. The extent to which this hierarchy reflects not only the artistic division of labor, but also common notions of creativity and prevailing social power relations is unmistakable. Social communication and creative self-expression, exploration and collective authorship 
all characteristics of improvisation seem to fall by the wayside. As a result of such artistic disempowerment of the orchestral musician, the composer and his, yes, composers were mostly highly ranked men in a patriarchal world, written works were downright exaggerated, a process that was to continue beyond the Romantic period and well into the new music of the 20th century. During this period, the practice of improvisation was certainly far from being an essential element of European art music. It was quasi not existent. And it was not until the second half of the 20th century that it experienced a short but very intense renaissance. But before this was to happen, a decisive aesthetic reorganization of European art music was to take place, starting with the classical modernism of the early 20th century, which is not without significance in our context. The turning away from the musical ideals of Romanticism, thus away from the exuberant effective expression of the individual, and the movement towards the depersonalized clarity of pure sound and form gave rise to completely new questions about improvisation. As in many cases, improvisation was considered, if nothing else, than a method of subjective expression. Did this mean that improvisation was completely finished and obsolete? Of course not but it required a completely new discourse to understand this apparent contradiction. In the second half of the 20th century, numerous new approaches in regard to the organization of musical material and the performance of music were developed. Aleatoric, indeterminacy, graphic scores, electroacoustic composition, live electronic music. All these new concepts also had an impact on the status of the interpreter, as they allowed or even explicitly asked for a higher degree of involvement from the performer. And in the 1960s, with its explosive political and social discourses, debates and actions, Contemporary music also witnessed new developments and ideas that reflected these emancipatory ideals and desires. Accordingly, it is not surprising that improvisation as an artistic method that both grants the individual autonomy and enables social interaction within a group suddenly came into the focus of both composers and ensembles longing for egalitarian democratic principles. In a certain sense, it seems that this development led to the process of splitting. Established composers, take Cage or Stockhausen for example, flirted with improvisation for a while, but soon rejected it again. One could argue not least because it ultimately called into question the composer's authorship and thus also his status. At the same time, other individuals and ensembles like Cornelius Cadru and Scratch Orchestra were formed, which, while rooted in the tradition of new music, began to explore and establish improvisation as their preferred method of music making. This movement was one of the inflows that led to the development of a completely new musical genre, improvised music. We will hear more about this in chapter 5. As the limited time frame of this overview does not allow us to outline these developments in more detail, I will pick up our ongoing discussion of the term improvisation. Here I want to point out more recent theoretical approaches that question the common dichotomy of composition and improvisation even within the framework of European art music, a not insignificant aspect in the context of our discussion. Bruce Ellis Benson writes in his book 
the improvisation of musical dialogue, a phenomenology of music. The problem with improvisation is that it does not fit very neatly into the schema that we normally use to think about music making. That is, the binary opposition of composition and performance. On the one hand, improvisation seems at least to be a kind of extemporaneous composition, in that it does not seem to be an interpretation of something that already exists. In this sense, it differs from performance, which we normally take to be a kind of representation, the presentation of something that has already been present and is made present once again. It is precisely this characteristic of being between composition and performance that makes improvisation particularly well suited to thinking about both, as well as their relation to one another. On my view, both composition and performance are improvisatory in nature, albeit in different ways and to differing degrees. Composers never create ex nihilo, but instead improvise, sometimes on tunes that already exist, but more frequently and importantly, on the tradition in which they work. I think we can clearly hear how Benson's points resonate with the observations and considerations we have made in our discussion of non-European musics. Let us leave the discussion of composition versus improvisation for the moment and focus on the new field of improvisation practices. In the next chapter, I want to discuss jazz music, an art form that, like no other, is almost synonymous with the concept of improvisation. Please do not forget to listen to the audio podcast to this chapter. Thank you and see you later.